Welcome to part 4 of the Atomic Audiovisuals in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we instantiated attractors and atoms in the start function, where each attractor has a predefined amount of atoms that are attracted to its corresponding attractor. In this part we will add a material to the atoms and start making an audio visualization. To make our visualization react to audio we need to add our audio peer class into the scene. So let's go to game object and create an empty and we'll rename this to audio peer and let's add a new component and we'll take the component of audio peer it will add the audio source and we need to select here an audio clip to use so inside audio folder I've added a song to use and we'll drag and drop this into here and let's turn on loop and we're all set up with our audio peer if you haven't got the audio peer class, then follow the audio visualization tutorial on my channel and you can create it in there. Now we will continue in our atomic attraction class where we will start coloring our atoms. And for that we need to create a new material. So let's type in here a public material. And we'll call this a material. And based on this material, we want to create eight different material instances based on the gradient and color it alongside that. So let's create a material array that's private and we'll call this the shared material. Now alongside the material, we also need to have a shared color. So let's create here a color array and we'll call this the shared color. Now let's save this and go back to Unity. Now we've got the material here and we need to fill in a material. So let's create a new folder and we'll call this material, create a new material and we'll call this the atom material. Let's set the albedo to black. I'll set metallic to somewhere halfway and the smoothness up really high. And there we've got our material. Now go to Atomic Attraction and drag and drop this into the material. Now go back to our script. Now it's going to get really interesting because we're going to set all of the atoms to the music. And we want to change the uh, scale and we want to change the emission. So let's create two floats to do that. So let's make a public float and we'll call the first one the Audio Scale Multiplier. And let's call the second one the audio emission multiplier. So these values uh, will control how much scale the scale should be of the atoms individually and also how much of the emission color should be multiplied. And now for the emission we want to have some kind of a threshold where if the music is below a certain point the emission will be turned off and if it's higher than a certain point the emission will be turned on so you get some kind of a flickering light so let's create a public float for that and we'll call this the threshold emission let's set this to a range because it's always between 0 and 1 all the values that we've got from the audio so we'll set it to a range between 0 and 1 now our audio peer class runs on buffered values and unbuffered values and we might want to apply buffered values to the scale or unbuffered values. And we're going to make a selection so we can select whether to use the buffered values for the color or the unbuffered values for the uh, scale so we can get different results. So we're going to create three different float arrays that will keep track of the different buffered or unbuffered values that we want to have. So we're making three different float arrays. One is the audio band emission threshold, one is the audio band emission color, and one is the audio band scale. Now all of these floats don't have a length yet, so we're going to set the length in the start function to a length of eight, because we've got eight different values in our audio pair class. So we've got the audio band emission threshold, emission color, and band scale, and they're all going to have a length of eight. Now for each of these three values we want to select whether we want to use the buffer or the no buffer value. And for that we can create a enumerator, which is very easy in the inspector because we get a drop down menu where we can select whether we want to use which one. So 
we are creating a public enumerator and this one is called the emission threshold and we have to open and close that one and we can fill in and specify uh, the name of our selection so we've got the buffered and the no buffer but if we would go into unity right now with this unum we won't see it even though it's public and I'm not sure why that is but we have to actually create a public um, instantiation of this emission threshold that we just created and we'll call this emission threshold without a dash and we'll say that it's a new emission threshold open close that one and now you can see in the inspector the emission threshold if I save the script now you can see here uh, the emission threshold with a drop down menu to the buffered or no buffer value now we're going to repeat the same for the emission color and the band scale. So we've got the emission color which also has the buffered and no buffered values and just the name is different. And we also got the atom scale. And now we've got three values that we can change. Now when we change these values nothing is happening yet. And in the update values we're going to make a check whether we use the buffered or the no buffered values and we're going to set the uh, audio bands of the audio pair to this different float arrays so let's scroll down and go to the update and to not clutter our script too much we're going to create a new void that will say that we select the audio values so let's create a void and we'll call this select audio values now in the update we will say select audio values going to run. Now inside the select audio values we're going to check the enumerator on which we've selected uh, whether we have the buffered or the no buffered values. So we're going to start with an if statement. If the emission threshold is equal to the buffered then we're going to do something and let's copy paste this if statement and if it's equal to the no buffer now we're going to do something else. So with a for loop of a length of 8, we're going to say that the audio band emission threshold position is equal to the audio peer class dot its audio band buffer. Now we can do the same thing for the no buffer, but we are going to use here the audio band. So let's comment this that this is about the threshold. Now we can copy paste these two times. Now let's change all these values. So we, we've got here the emission color instead of the emission threshold. And here we've got the emission color with the dash in front. And here we've got the audio band emission color. And as well as here. And for the atom scale, we need the atom scale. And this is going to be the audio band scale. As well as for this one. Now before we add our atom behavior in the update function, we still need to first apply our material and our colors to the atoms. We will do this in the start function. And we've got our shared material. And we need to say that it's going to be a new material with a length of 8. Now, as well as for the shared material, we also got the shared color and it's going to be a new color with the length of 8 as well. And now inside the first for loop with the attract points inside the start function, we will add the colors to the material. So we'll set the colors to material here. And what we want to do is we have 8 different materials and we want to make instances of these materials and set it to the shared material array. So let's create a uh, material here and we'll call this the mat instance and it is going to be a new material and it's going to use the material prevet. Now for the shared material its position will be the material instance and now for the shared color it's going to be evaluating the gradient 
and we're going to do a step of 1.25 times i. And now we need to apply the shared material still to the atom. So if we scroll all the way down to right above the count atom, we will say that the atom instance dot get component get its mesh renderer dot its material is going to be the shared material i. Now we will scroll down to the update and let's add a new void and we'll call this void atom behavior. Let's add the atom behavior to the update and inside the atom behavior we will start to create the same for loop that we've done in the start function and we're going to start by making again a count of the atom that we're at. Now just like in the start function we will start here with a for loop with the length of the attract points and inside this for loop there's another for loop with the length of the amount of atoms per point. Now at the end of the amount of atoms per point if you remember correctly from the start function we have to say here that the count atom is going to be plus plus. Now we've created a threshold emission variable and we want to check on every band of the audio pair class if it's higher or lower than this threshold emission and if it's higher then we want to set a color and apply a color to the atom. If it's lower than the threshold it should apply a black color so the color is off and you get a flickering light. So let's start off with an if statement. So if the audio band emission threshold and its position is going to be the attract points index because if we are looking inside Unity then we can see here that we can uh, specify an amount ourselves. So if it's greater or equal to the threshold then we want to apply our color and if it's not greater so just else then we're going to set our emission color of the shared color array to zero. So let's first do that and create a color and we'll call this just audio color and it's going to be a new color and we want to set it to black so black would be 0001 and we'll say that the shared material at its index set color in the shader we can set the emission color and it's called emission color and we'll set it to the audio color that we just created and now it's turned to black now if it is greater than the threshold then we want to set our color to the amplitude of our audio band so let's create a color here and we'll call this as well audio color and it's going to be a new color and now we've got to set the R, G, B and A values so let's say that we take the shared color that we've set and we want to get its R now let's multiply this by the audio band emission color and its position is going to be the attract points position in the loop and we're going to multiply this by the audio emission multiplier. Now copy this and this is a 1 for the A and we can close that one. Now we just need to change this to G and B. Now that we've done that we can do the same as in the else function. We can set the shared material its emission color to the audio color we just specified. Now we only need to set the scale of the atoms to the music inside this for loop in the update. So we're going to talk to the atom array and we want to have the position of the count atom and we want to get its transform dot its local scale and it's going to be a new vector 3 which will take at first the atom skill set that we've set up in the start function and we're going to get the count of the atom plus the audio band skill attract points and it's going to be multiplied by the audio skill multiplier. Now let's set a comma here, copy paste this two times, we can close this one here. Now somehow I forgot to open this for loop and also somehow the count atom uh, got removed, so count atom plus plus. And with that in place, we can save the script and go back to Unity and check out the result.
So here we've got all of the different variables that are exposed to the atomic attraction class. We've got the audio scale multiplier, audio emission multiplier, threshold emission, and the different buffers or no buffers that we can choose. So let's check out the result of the scene. As you can see, it looks pretty cool already. We can change all of these variables at runtime. And we can change the threshold emission. Or change this to no buffer and get a different result in our visualization. So this comes to the end of this tutorial part. In the next part, we will look at the post-processing and we will animate our atomic attraction to create some cool compositions. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. If you learned something, then please give this a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to the channel to stay updated with more tutorials, then please do that. And look at my Patreon account for uh, getting the source code of this project with presets included. Thank you for watching and see you next time.